What's up, everybody? Lanzer here. I'm nearing the end of what I would call my Colossus run. I've been doing a lot of Colossus videos lately and learned a lot about the Colossus. I really love it. It's one of my favorite vehicles now. Expensive ish. If you have a pretty active outfit, it only costs 15 perps, which for the Devil Dogs, I'd say we're not super active anymore. But we're able to max out our greens like every week, two weeks, which is good because the way I've been able to sustain my Colossus pulls, and I think I've pulled more than 40 at this point, is by using Expeditions. And something interesting about the Expeditions, I mathed it out in Excel, is that if you do longs, so if you pull, if you do, let's say you, you craft two Colossus, that's 30 perps. All right. Well, first of all, it takes 30 minutes. So what I recommend, instead of punching uh, longs, which will take 36 hours, I almost always just craft a 15 perp Colossus, and then I burn a perp medium right away. So I go into the, the sanctuary, then I'll burn a 15 perp and I'll craft it right after that. So it's taking 50 blues instead of 75 blues. And it's taking 24 hours instead of 36 hours. And that's how I've been able to pull about two to three Colossus a, a week. Is when my blues or the outfit blues go down by 50, you can tell that that will take four hits. And in a week's time, I'm really only burning about, uh, I'd say two a week every once in a while i'll then have to burn you know like a 75 cent or a 75 blue every once in a while 150 blue if i really want to just you know eat eat a bunch of blues and then knock it back up to 200 after it goes below 50 every once in a while maybe once a month that'll happen but most of the time i'm burning 15 perps and then when i get to after I burn two mediums, then I'll burn a 75 blue. And again, I'm only waiting a, a day per expedition to restock. So that's how I've been able to keep up with my two, sometimes three Colossus pulls a week for a while now. It's pretty cool. Uh, I'm, I'm not even the only person that's using resources. So I kind of just wait to see. I, I only really craft when i can burn a medium right after and we have the blues to sustain a a an immediate crafting right after that hopefully that makes sense uh, i just do it all at once i make sure it's all good and then after that that's when i look and we have two colossus so kind of as my ending run i'd say i, I might do some more videos after this for the colossus but it's gonna I'm, I'm going to be focusing more on construction after this. But here's some of the things that I ended with. For the Colossus, I have two engineer loadouts. The first one is kind of like my my team Colossus, and I also double this as my, my team vehicle, like if I need a gunner. I normally only run this when I have a squad that I'm with. I'll run Logistics Specialist, which means that people can just spawn right into my vehicle if there's an open gunner slot and counter intel counter intel has become one of the de facto implants in my mind for a colossus because one of the things that really hurts as a colossus is the time it takes to find your enemy so when i'm getting hit by multiple rockets because this thing's so big and because whenever i use the mad or the the skylance battery it auto damages and the auto damages makes it look like someone's hitting me from, from behind. And when I'm in the middle, midst of a battle, it can be very overwhelming to figure out, is that a real hit marker or is that just my mad and orbital hit marker that, that, that's doing damage? So I use counter intel to just kind of cut through that and be able to see exactly on my map and my HUD where the shots are coming from. Uh, it's, it's been a lifesaver in terms of directing gunners where they need to go. So... That's that. If I'm by myself, or if I don't expect people to be able to help me, I use Sweep Hub, Sweep HUD, 
and counter intel. Sometimes I will swap it out for the tar well, <laughs> what's it called? Target focus. I like seeing health bars, but I only really do that whenever it's when I'm dealing with a lot of enemies. That way I can figure out which one to target first because they're low on health. Sometimes it can be take a little while for the for the mammoth cannon, not mad enabled, to take something down. So I like targeting lower health things to take them down first. But the sweep hub is really helpful for a reticle or a crosshair. I've been playing with a lot of different ones from Boom Chuckle and Bob Laportos. Thank you very much for your for your reticles. I, I constantly switch between them depending on what situation I'm in. So they've been updating for the new velocities from the AP and the JGX. So I'm just kind of, I use one for most things uh, for the Colossus. And so I put on Sweep Hub, HUD, even though I queue my ground all the time to try and find random landmines, it still helps to know the distance and just be able to quick calculate based on the, the crosshair that I'm using at the time. I don't run Ammo Printer anymore. That used to be a bigger deal, but now I just turn around and go restock ammo. And it, and it hasn't been, it hasn't taken away from what I'm going after. So every once in a while, especially when you have gunners, you have to pay attention with the Colossus because they will eat through your ammo real fast. But because I have the, the indicators now that show red, yellow, I just turn around. And it kind of goes well with keeping yourself moving all the time, unless you're in like a Skylance mode where you think, where I'm constantly just trying to Skylance everything. I do do that a lot. But lately I've been toying a lot with the Mad Cannon. In any case, I haven't really missed it. Even running kind of Ant, Battle Ant, or or AP, or Lightning, or not AP, AP, Vanguard, or JGX, Lightning, I haven't really missed not having ammo printer. So what I would used to cons what I used to say was always have ammo printer on as an engineer in a vehicle. I'm kind of changing my opinion that a lot of times there there are ammo towers not far away that you can restock, and I always have a HUD for sweep, and I always have counter intel, or I'm able to run logistics and counter intel. It's just, it's been helping me out big time. So this time, this last run, I am think I'm going to do more of a solo. It's low pop right now. There isn't really much going on. So now let's go ahead and run over to the Colossus Terminal. And I'll show you the ending, kind of like my, my settled, my settled loadouts for the Colossus. Here they are. My first one is Survival Colossus. I have all Gex and one goblin i frequently switch that out for a fourth geck though the goblin is more of a niche thing whenever i'm a hassan i use goblin with therms so thermal so that helps because the goblin has 25 more ammunition and it's faster fire rate but it's not more important than three geckos so uh survival like i'm on indar right now i'll keep it on goblin just because I might, I'm probably going to be by myself, so I'd like to switch between the different fire variants if I need to. I might even put a dingo on, but dingoes are very, very niche. And on Indar, they're really bad. So, or at least I haven't found them to be very useful. So Survival Colossus is fire suppression over MAD, because MAD's not really conducive to survival. It takes health away. Bolstered Bombardment, I will switch out for NAR. I was testing out bolstered, or I just ranked up uh, its max to 60%. Uh, but NAR is kind of de facto when it comes to survival. Uh, sometimes I swap out for fall hardening, like when I'm fighting at, at the center of Amrish. But mostly it's just NAR. And then Scorting Recycler. Uh, sometimes I do improve cooling, but... At this point, it's a different loadout. So I use Cording Recycler because I'm always... I would use that in order to re-up my, my Cordium, which 
for a survival mechanic is when I'm in Skylands mode. When I'm in Skylands mode, every shot I take against the shield is a shot that gets taken against Cordium, so it kind of mitigates uh, almost like a resist shield, I think it is, in Heavy Assault. Could I have that wrong, though? So whenever I'm... This is only really helpful when I'm... I'm out of Skylands so that it can restock itself, but it restocks it at 40 a sec 50 a second, so it's very helpful. So that's my Survival Colossus. Then I'll go into my Mad Colossus. This is I've been testing this out a lot, and I pretty much settled on Mad Cannon. So it takes 500 a shot, and when you start off with max of, of 8,000 out of, I think, 10, then, you know, you have a lot of 500 hits. Oh, that's, what, 30, right? 30 instances if I'm not using Skylance. So I usually don't last past 30, <laughs> I've, I've found. I'm usually dead before I hit my 30th Mad Cannon usage. So that's actually a pretty effective usage for me to use Mad. And then I'll use Gnar. Gnar to recoup the, the health hit of a Mad instance. Every time you shoot with Mad on, it does anywhere from, I don't even remember now, up to 500 damage. Cool. So that was the, the second one. I don't need Bolstered because I'm when I'm using Mad, and I want to maximize my mad. I'm I'm not trying to be in bolstered bombardment or a Skylance shield much. Fallout Hardeny is very niche. I barely use it. And the last one is this third one. Am I should I use Cordium Recycler or should I use Improved? As I said, I'm usually dead before my 30th hit of Mad. So I don't really need Cordium Recycler. Instead, I use Improved Cooling, which will decrease that 500 by 50%. So I'm really only taking a max of 250, and when I'm using NAR, that is easy, because MAD takes, oh, what's its cooldown? I think it's a 45 second cooldown, it doesn't say right here, but there's plenty of time for the NAR to kick in after 12 second break. So I'm good. I'm all good with the, the MAD, and this has been a pretty effective combo. I'll probably end up running this one for this time. Then CAMS. Whenever I have a full team, I'm running with a squad. I like using CAMS because this thing ends up enabling a lot of push power, especially in Nason's Defiance and Hassan. You get up to that BC point, and especially the if you're on the south warp gate, you get to that northern point with that garage. You just kind of stick yourself right next to it and, and go at it. For CAMS, fire suppression is important to me um, because in CAMS you have to be deployed uh, as as your Skylance in order to use CAMS as a Sunderer. So that makes you extremely vulnerable for long periods of time. So fire suppression is good for those random C4 overwhelms, which is like four light assaults throwing C4 on you. Two is enough to take you down to 60% health. So you can imagine you'll die really fast if you're not paying attention. I always keep Goblin on at this point because that's your point defense. Um, I've been toying with actually doing two Goblins here because of how important it is to keep people off of me. So I'll, I'll usually do front right and back left. And let's just go ahead and... Kind of get that one going, settled. And the last one is Bolstered Bombardment. So because I'm in max Skylance Shield, I'm trying to mitigate as much damage as possible. And with Bolstered bombar Bombardment, you go from 50 to 60%. So it's a full 10% extra. Is it better than NAR? In my opinion, yes. Because you're in Bolstered Bombardment, even though NAR will kick in, when you're not using Skylance, uh, when you're not shooting the Skylance battery, uh, but you're behind the shield. So for instance, people are shooting at my shield, it's plucking away at my Cordium. I can still, NAR will still be used and it is still effective. It will it will not count against the, ten, the 12 second break. So it's actually really helpful to, to be there. But what I found is that when I'm close quarters, 
against enemies, enemies are constantly getting in my my shield all the time. And and all they all I need is just one little rocklet to or one uh one melee from a, a vehicle damaging knife to interrupt Nar. So it gets interrupted way too much for it to be as helpful as it normally is in like survival or in my my long range Skylands vods, where I can kind of just retreat whenever I'm not taking hits or, or when I'm low on my cordium shield, and Nar will just help with the with, with that. It's very good in that situation, but up close and personal, Nar is not. So what I need instead is something to prolong the time it takes for my my shield to expire, my which is my cordium window. If I'm in a team environment, I'm usually able to get some sort of ammo, repair bus, or an ant with cordium. It's very easy nowadays. So I don't run a cordium recycler. Um, I can't if I'm trying to use CAMS. So I just have to be in a team environment where that's conducive. So those three have been very helpful. And uh, some I'll, I'll switch, like I said, I like the geckos. They are all-purpose, very handy. But when you're in CAMS and you're up close and personal, you need that extra ammunition, spray power, and therms in order to really point defense. And then my last one is my orbital strike. This one came in handy one or two times. I don't use this one very often, but it basically is to survive a lot of fallout and, well, orbitals. And normally this has been most helpful in... Ascent, when I'm like right here in this stretch or right here, it, when you're fighting in the middle, especially on low pop, where Rock Slide is TR and Lith Corp is VS and Ravens is NC, you know, like if we're the Amherst Southern, then orbitals happen quite a bit at the Ascent, especially in tight spaces like this part right here or this part right here where it's hard to escape but for vehicles. So every once in a while, when I think the orbitals are especially strong that night or that day, I pull my orbital strike Colossus, which is basically fire suppression to get myself out of uh, red status real fast. Fallout hardening, which is a huge boon to orbital defense and then cordon recycler because I just nowadays, whenever I get orbitaled, if I have full cordium, I will just uh, I proved in Nova that you can survive a direct orbital by just deploying your Skylance and letting the orbital eat all of your your ten thousand cordium shield, and it will take about thirty forty percent of your health. So you're still alive after it, even without fallout hardening. With fallout hardening, thirty percent. I bet you it would just barely eat my shield at that point. All of it. Maybe 9,000. So the fire suppression to quickly recover, the fallout hardening to reduce the effect of orbitals, and the cordon recycler to quickly restock after I, I come out of deployed Skylands and I run. <laughs> Pugs ended up being pretty much the only instance where I thought that this was actually helpful uh, as an orbital strike because when I'm in the ascent there's short range vehicles all over the place and the pug in the front seems to uh, not the pug that's anti-infantry I guess I put that on because where was it right here in Amorish I put that on because the little tunnel right here that goes into the uh, C point is it whatever point is right here there are little tunnels along this ridge so the pug was there to be like a, uh, a bulldog on steroids to stop the little the little infantry people from rushing me all over the place because what I found with the goblin is that it's so in the gecko they're, the little sprites are so small that your your miss rate is high so the pug kind of fixes that problem <laughs> I think what I was aiming for in the front left was the fang. The fang is is like a viper. It's like a 
Viper on steroids. I use that every once in a while, uh, but I've been testing it with just Gex lately because Gex are always helpful against everything. So I just, that was my latest test was the pug. And those are, the, oh, this was my test Colossus. So I was, I was testing out a lot of different stuff not long ago. And that's it. Those are my loadouts now that I'm going to end up sticking with. My Survival Colossus, which focuses on long-range engagement with maximum regeneration. My Mad Colossus, which focuses on non-deployed Mad Cannon. So you'll have uh, improved cooling in NAR to, to re... It's like medium-range engagement to long-range, because Mad straightens out your shot pretty nice like almost like a gecko cams is when i'm with a team or a platoon hopefully a platoon and that and that emphasizes me being in deployed skylands mode to mitigate damage and to quickly recover from c4s that may happen orbital strike in rare instances where i want to fight the ascent i'm just kind of feeling it then i'll pull orbital strike which will can survive prop two probably three or direct orbitals with a full tank of cordium and then it maximizes cordium regeneration when i'm withdrawing after getting orbitals so uh pair that with your engineer that always has a sweep hub hud and always has counter intel or lets you to quickly move people into your <clears throat> into your colossus when you have a team with you and always identify where shots are coming from. It's just, it's been an effective pairing of, of the loadouts. So let's go ahead and do that. I think I'm in, yeah, I'm in my survival. So let's go with, hmm. Indar usually is the survival type because it's just kind of long range stuff and air. So actually, I, I'm going to go survival and see how long I can survive. This might end up being a long one or a really short one. And the last thing I would like to say before I pull is the appearance. <clears throat> what I found is that Nomad and Montu have different, different, uh, what would you say? Not usage. So the trim, as you can see, without anything, you can see the trim all the time here. With Nomad, a little bit less trim that you can see. And with Montu, very little trim. You can see a little bit here on the on the edges and in the middle, but not near as much as the Nomad. So it's just kind of a little, and especially in the front, it's the most, because it takes out most of it except for the turret. So, yeah, just uh, kind of like an interesting little side bit. <clears throat> this has helped me only a few times when at nighttime, I, sometimes your tank, your tank is so big that sometimes you can get a little lost with it, especially on Hassan at night when bullet tracer rounds are flying all over the place. It the orientation of your tank is, if you're not paying attention, I get lost sometimes. So, that's just, you know, first world problems though. So let's go ahead and pull a survival and let's run it. So you can see my 8,000 is already taken up to 12,000. I thought it was 10, but it's 12. Let's go ahead and head to the middle. What I did do, and I, I need to do for the rest of these, is the casual strolls through <clears throat> through these continents. What is going on over here? Oh, nice. Let's help them out first. I did the casual thro stroll through Esamir. I thought it was really fun, really cool. Mm. Hello. I think you're trying to get over here. Negative. Can't work like that.
All right, now here's a good opportunity for me to Skylance. A good rule of thumb is your Skylance will be at a minimum where your tires are. So if something is not above your tires, then probably not going to have minimum range. See? So my tires at, and I forgot to mention at your, uh, when you're looking at the highest mark, look at where your bottom tire is. And that is how you know you can hit it. So here I go. I'm going to find little guy over here who kept trying to hit me. Oh, there's something over here. And this is counter intel at work right now. There he is. Oh, I can't hit him. Let's scare him. So another trick you can learn is kind of right there. Kill him first. I'm going to fire suppression. Anytime I get below 9,000, I always fire suppression now. It's just been very helpful keeping me alive. I used to think that I should keep it the way it is uh, until I get to red, but it's just super helpful to use it anytime I'm below 9,000. It's way more useful. <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> Let's just kind of get in the way here. Silly people. Hmm. A lot going on. All right, so there's quite a bit of heat coming out here, so I'm gonna go ahead and retreat. Fire suppression. Get behind this tower so they can stop nailing me as their primary target. Got a little JGX help going on there. That's good. Let my NAR kick back in. I don't think I'm going to hit that one, but let's just pop a shot. My NAR will kick back in any second now. So there it is. So back in action. Oh. Oh, I got him. Little guy. Run across. <laughs> I didn't even know I was going to hit that. The splash is, is just right on this thing. It's not too much to where I'm just hitting everything I don't mean to, but enough to where I can miss and still reasonably do some damage. The splash is not all that much, though. So that's where I think it's just right. And here you go. And you can look on the right hand side. Ultimica. He he burned about half of the ammo, looks like. Oh. But the ammo tower is right in front of me. What are you doing? You know that's not. Alright, I'm just gonna rush this guy. Yeah, he's dead. And then where's the other one? So I'm quite happy. See, look, sweet pud. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Doesn't it show it for everyone else, too? Hmm. So here's where I'm going to back up a bit. And... Skylance. And I should be able to hit everything at the base now. But uh, let's see who is hitting me. Counter Intel doesn't tell me where it's coming from. So right now I'm just gonna. Oh, there's somebody. The Skylance is awesome. This thing is pinpoint accurate. The thing I noticed though is it's slightly offset from your crosshair. So if you shoot. Let's say, let's find a really pinpoint target here. There he goes. I have to shoot just below him. Is it below? No, it's above. I'm sorry. Opposite. Oh, look. People. So they shoot just above. Above? 
Hold on. I haven't done this in like... Hmm. Hold on. Let's retest that out. Yeah, it's got to be just above. So they might have a sunder up there or something, I guess. In any case, it doesn't shoot straight. So if I want to shoot in that window, it goes in. Let's go right at the base of it. Okay, so that's not it. So let's go right at the top of it. Hmm. I know I I know what I saw, and I've been doing it that way for a while, and it's been working out. So I have to. Interesting. So there's probably thunder up there, playing around. There we go. Got the assist. So you can see that my... Oh, slightly above, I guess. So just slightly, slightly. It might be because I'm using a different reticule right now that it, it's acting... Or at least it's displaying to me different. So with my quarry I'm about to go down, I'm going to need to make a break for it here. Interesting. I did not know that. I've never had my accordion break without. Oh, thank you for the reps. So what you see on the left is my accordion is restocking itself. Watch when it breaks. It's going to start restocking. Even though I'm in Skylands, that's new. Um, whenever I break my my shield i always i don't think i've ever had an instance where i keep fighting in skylands with a broken shield i normally undeploy and then go to a safe place but right now i'm in skylands and it's restocking that is interesting my man that's super interesting let me let me uh just Word, word of advice to the infantry. If you are fighting against... Not just me. Anyone who is in Skylands... And has a bead on you... Don't... Don't do this. It... You know, it's not a bad idea to just plink away, but... My accuracy is pinpoint. And even if I miss my shots, I'm gonna get you one time. All I need is you just... Poke your head up just once. My timing's correct, that I can get some sort of hit on you. And all I need is to hit any part of your body, and you won't survive. Like that guy right there. So, my accordion is restocking right now. Like right now, you think you're safe. But you're not. And, because of the splash, I'm just going to shoot right through the window until you're dead. So, this kind of changes the strat a little bit. Alright, let's wait for you to poke. I'm going to show you. Oh, I'm out of ammo. That's awesome. So, this is an interesting strat. I can now just keep on engaging through a broken shield. Let my Cordium Recycler just restock. And then when I'm ready, undeploy, redeploy, shield's back up. That's hilarious. Because right now, the threat is pretty low. But when that changes, I can undeploy, redeploy. And there are many instances where I don't want to be deployed with my shield getting plinked away by people who don't threaten me. I can't shoot right now because of no ammo. But you know what I mean? With a rep, Sunday, there's these little plinks are nothing to me. So... I'd rather fight through a broken shield, take the little bit of damage, and then just eat it while my my accordion is being restocked. Works for me. 
So last little bit of VOD advice there, I think. I might run some more VODs for Colossus, but with the new pending changes to construction, I really want to I really want to start VODing the stuff that we've been doing over the years and, and now the new opportunities that exist with the reduced no deploy, which has been awesome. I've been building a lot of cool bases that have been much more useful to people now because I can build right next to a base. So, there's that. Hmm. All right, let's roll. I also have been using the Colossus Warhorn, which if you don't know what that is, there's the fifth anniversary, which is the confetti thing, but the war horn, it's awesome. I'll do, maybe I'll, next VOD I do, I'll choose mad, which uses the, the war horn. It is really, really loud <laughs> and hugely, uh, what's the word? A lot of bass to it. I really like it. Ooh. I'm in range of an orbital. Hopefully they'll orbital me. Think they can get me. That would be cool. And I could show you what I mean. If they were to orbital me right now, I would survive with over half my health. At least that's what happened at the ascent some uh, three or four months ago. And I've been doing it ever since, but in different cases, like I haven't always, that first time was a fluke. I had hot full up everything. It's not always the case that that's true. So, and there have been other times I've been orbital, quite a few, where I'd have like half cordium and most health. Uh, th that's right on the line of surviving. I, I usually didn't don't survive those. But if I have half cordium full health, I usually survive barely. So I'm going to be careful just a little bit because I want I want that person to orbital me. So I'm going to juxtapose myself with the uh, fire suppression to make sure I don't go below 9,000. And just let my accordion... Oops, hit my friend. So we're just gonna chill. Some parts of this I may cut, shorten, but This is what being a Colossus really looks like at times. You're just kind of sitting, helping, trying to keep annoying things off your teammates. What was I? I wasn't even on the scoreboard. Huh. Did quite a bit of killing, so I don't know why I wasn't on the scoreboard. Here, go ahead. My gun. Go ahead and get a little bit of ammo. Back to 49. Should be good to go. What the? All right. Is there a squad I can join? Yeah. <laughs> that looks... While that may look like that's something you can get through, you can't. What? Nice. I can actually hit you from here. 
my friend. But you didn't know. Show yourself. Show thyself. No? No show? Hmm. Yeah, anyways, the tire wells prevent me from getting in there. I can get the first, do the first part. Yeah, see? See the left and right tire well? That's what's stopping me. Deceptively maneuverable. Or decept deceptively not maneuverable. That tire well also catches things. Watch, it's about to hook me. Oh, and Hassan, that is really, really annoying all the time. Get hooked by the most random things. And it just kind of, especially if you're running, <laughs> It's a bad day. It's a bad day for a Colossus. Like that, right there. Hooked on the edge of the crate. So I guess we'll just chill. I'm in the no, no deploy zone right now. So I'm just kind of hanging out. Oh, I didn't see that. Now that I can hit with my Skylance. Actually, just like this. Skylance does a lot of damage to... What? Did you just deconstruct that? It just died, did it? It's interesting. Oh, then I guess the rock just got in the way. So in any case, as I was saying, Skylance does a lot of damage to a base. I'm... If I wanted to deconstruct a base and I had the resources to pull a Colossus, that's what I would do. I would uh, I would do that. Because you can hit it from long range, one. And two, it just does a massive amount of damage to modules. So, very helpful. Oh, sorry. I'm not trying to bully you. I can't... <sighs> reach it from there either. Interesting. Now I'm out of range of the capsule. What if I go down here? Whoop. I've only flipped my Colossus once. And we caught it on a VOD. And we kept it alive for the rest of the alert. It was like 15 minutes. Uh, we flipped it over by Havar right here. That's where I flipped it. But I was with a platoon, and the whole platoon thereon decided to keep me alive uh, for the rest of the alert. And we did. I'll have to release that VOD. I don't remember which one it was in. But yeah. That'd be awesome. So I guess I can't really hit it from where I am right now. But friends are taking care of that, so no big deal. All the turrets are down, so there really isn't much to do. Except just chill. I could hit it, I guess. If I angled up, maybe on that rock? Hit him with my mammoth. Nope. Jeez. That's pretty cool. I'll have to log that one for later. I was hoping he would orbital me, but I guess not. Let's just go ahead and do a little, a little something, I really like playing the game on high ultra now. It, I used to play potato for, I don't know, nine, eight years to get max f FPS and to, especially in the vehicle, be able to spot tank mines better. But I've recently just, you know, want to play the game, want to play a fun game. 
plant side is still a lot of fun, but I just want it to look better now. I don't know. It just doesn't matter to me anymore if I die from a tank mine. It's just... It, the game looks cooler and it feels more fun with high ultra settings. I didn't think I'd ever really find myself saying that. But... I haven't really noticed any negative difference. Oh, was I first? Oh, Sway is on. Okay, cool. So Sway and I were first and third. So that means that our... I guess... Let's see what type of territory this was. Oh, it's a... It's a green. Well, we do need greens. This is the one where we have to play a waiting game. Something in here? A lot of waiting. A lot of waiting. You could... You could just blitz the enemy, even on low pop. But... I found I don't normally survive very long in those situations, even though you have 10,000 health. As a Colossus, it is deceptively not invincible. <laughs> this thing will go down real fast if you are not paying attention to your surroundings. Yep, yeah, see? Even he's waiting. Take a little health. I don't see the vitals. Maybe I'm just on the wrong one. Oh, yeah. Now we can get in. It's kind of coast. Just coasting. A little fighting going on in the crown. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on there. For NC, at least. Kind of ghost capping up NS material. A little bit of fighting. Ghost capping along Tarich. Oh! Someone accordion bond me. Nice! That's a good tactic. That was a very smart tactic. Good on you. I would uh, just go ahead and say, though, that Cordium Bombs don't do a ton of damage to me. I don't know why. It, they, I wouldn't personally recommend it. It takes a while for it to happen, for it to go off. It doesn't do a ton of damage, like you just saw it did maybe 15%. Tank Mines and C4 seem to do more damage to me than Cordium Bombs. So... I don't recommend it. Deja vu, I remember about not long ago. We we're literally waiting to do the same thing. And because of low pop, Tarich proper is out of play. So now it's time to go to Scarred Mesa. One of my favorite bases, even though it's completely can't even really use vehicles to help. Mostly. 
You can with the Skylands, though, ironically enough. But it's... I've had a lot of fun fights at Scarred Mesa, not just vehicle, but like the old plant side days where you had to, whenever you wanted to get someplace, you, you couldn't just squad beacon in. You had to drop with gals. Valks weren't even a thing yet. Yeah, you had to coordinate an entire team's drop on Scarred Mesa and it was just, it was a fun place to fight. Interesting battle dynamic. It's like a little ant over there is going for some cordium. Slash building a base. Yeah, cordium. I'm a big fan of base building. It's it's become a lot more fun now that the no deploy or no construct zones have been Reduced. Oh. Nice. Yeah, so I don't want to go around. I'm going to kill that thing. He's just going to hack it. It's going to be ours. Yeah. Little guy's got the right idea. Let me help you out. Go, 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 go. Oh man, I was gonna push you up. Frames, frames are hanging every once in a while. I'll figure that out later. Ooh. So I'm looking for a downward angle. And also, if you didn't know, if you ever need help, your mammoth cannon has a way to help dislodge you. So whenever I'm trying to get up a particularly hard slope, if I can't get up with the mammoth, or if I can't get up by myself, I'll use the mammoth by just shooting behind me and it will push me forward. <laughs> so I don't think I can hit the bottom of that door. Oh, yes I can. And this is where I can help. Pen point accuracy right through A. But maybe I want to move a little bit to the left. Slope down a little bit so I can hit that vehicle bay if I have to. If possible. That should be enough. I can't look down any further. Oh, deploy fire suppression. Here we go. Boom. Oh, I died. Oh, he hit me with C4 too. And he was hitting me with his rocket launcher. That's, that's interesting. Okay. It looks like that runs over. Hmm. Wasn't paying attention to my flank. Good job. I'll have to message him and let him know. Cool. So that's it. That's going to be the Colossus run. Got me pretty good. And yeah, Mammoth Gecko Goblin with Cording Recycler, Gnar, and Fire Expression for Survival. When I'm using Mad, I want to use. Mad, NAR, and Improved Cooling. When I'm doing CAMS, CAMS, Bolster Bombardment Shield, and Fire Suppression. 
and then orbital strike which would have helped me there would be cording recycler fallout hardening and fire suppression and for vehicles i as you saw i ran out of ammo a couple of times but but it was pretty minor uh, and even when i'm in a hard battle it's still you know i you i know but can find somebody to help me with ammo so i use counter intel and sweep hub sweep hud but when i'm with a squad i'll use logistics and counter and that's it colossus thanks everybody